I am Zor. Welcome to Uni Zor Education. Uh, I would like to put a little bit more solid foundation under the concept of integer numbers. We talked about the fact that natural numbers do exist in, uh, in the real life. And then we have introduced the concept of zero and negative numbers primarily based on their properties. For instance, zero is a number which, if added to any natural number, will uh, retain, the result will be the same as the original na uh, natural number. Well, this fact of defining an object based on its properties is not really um, mathematically strict or um, correct in this case, I would say. And here is why. Uh, for instance, um, I'm saying, okay, there are people who have two eyes, and they do exist in real life. Now, let me define a new concept. A person with one eye in the middle of his forehead. Well, I can define whatever I want, but we understand that these people do not exist, and in the same way, how do I know that zero is something real which I can deal with? Um, any principle of defining an object based on its uh, based on its properties requires, well, two major things. If we really want to deal with these new objects, number one, we have to prove that they exist, and number two, in many cases, we would like to have to have them uh, in in certain uh, unique uh, incarnation. So there is only one zero, for instance, as, as as an element of some other set. So this type of definition of zero as something which added to five results in five is not mathematically rigorous. I would like to put a little bit more solid foundation and approach differently the concept of integer numbers um, more constructively. Well, basically, I will construct these numbers from existing elements, whatever we have right now. Um, I assume that we have right now a concept of natural numbers um, quite well defined, which means we know that they exist, we know the order that 1 precedes 2, 2 precedes 3, etc. We know how to add numbers, natural numbers, and we know that any two numbers, any two natural numbers, can be added together and you will get another, and we know which one, um, natural number. Operation of subtraction is not always defined. We can subtract 5 from 8, but we cannot subtract 8 from 5, so it's partially defined operation of subtraction, only in case the number from which we are subtracting is bigger than the number we are subtracting from. Um, no, it's vice versa. The number from which we are subtracting should be bigger than the, the, the number which we are subtracting. Sorry about that. Okay, so anyway, I presume that um, these properties of natural numbers we do know, and based on these properties, I would like to construct relatively uh, rigorously integer numbers, all integer numbers. <clears throat> so, here's how, how can we, uh, we can do it. And, and by the way, this is not a, a unique approach, and there are probably some other uh, mathematically solid approaches um, uh, uh, on how to construct it, integer numbers. This is something which I just uh, came up with as a, as a good way of explaining mathematically better in some way than before what's the concept of integer number actually is, and what are these numbers. Okay, here it, here it is. Um, we know about natural numbers, so I'll just put them natural. One, two, three, etc. So we know these numbers, and we know their properties. Integer numbers, as I'm defining them right now, by definition, Integers are strings of 
the form open curly bracket assign plus or minus and some natural number and the closing curly bracket and also another string will be an element of um, of this set of integer numbers so all elements all strings of this format where instead of 1 to 3 or 3 to 37 we can actually substitute any natural number all these strings which look like this I call integer numbers well I can again call whatever I want but uh, first question do they exist? Of course they exist, because I constructed them. This is a constructive approach to creation of integer numbers. So we have a set of strings, and this set of strings I call integer numbers. Well, that's only um, the beginning. Now I have to define operations. And again, my goal is to define operations in such a way that uh, any two integer new objects, any two integer numbers can be subtracted edits subtracted to each other without any restrictions and uh, I have a well-defined operations on, on all these elements of this new set of integer numbers. All right, fine, so let's define these operations. The rules. Basically, I'm defining the rules. Rule number one if I add element 0 to any other element, by definition, the result will be the same as any of these elements, which means 0 plus... Now, this plus is addition. This is something which I define as an operation. This plus is just a symbol. It's just a sign. It's, uh, it's a character, basically, as part of the string. So, if I define define operation of addition on any element of my new set of integer numbers with element I call 0, I will have the result my original number. In particular, actually, it means that 0 added to 0 results in 0. And minus 37 added to 0 results in minus 37. That's what my first rule actually states. 0 added in on any side to uh, any other element, including itself, results in that element which we are adding it with. Okay, that's my first rule. Great. Let's continue. The second rule. If I'm adding two elements of my new set with opposite signs, so one is plus and another is minus, by definition I'm getting this element zero, which I have started with. This is a rule. This is the definition. This is an axiom, if you wish, of how I define operation of addition between any two numbers with different signs and the same natural number inside. Well, as you understand, this will be a prototype of my reverse uh, operation in the future. Okay, that's rule number two. I finished with zeros. Rule number three. If I'm adding two elements with pluses, inside the rule is I have to get the inner natural numbers which are inside add them according to operation of natural numbers as we know it and that will be what? Uh, one sixth, right? and that would be the result with the same operator with the same sign inside, plus. You see, plus, plus, and plus. And similarly, by definition, again, if it's two minuses, I will exactly rule 
according to the same principle. I retain the sign, inner sign, minus, minus, minus. And the natural numbers inside should be added together, and that would be the result. So which rules I still have to define? Obviously, with opposite signs. One is plus, and another is negative. Um, OK, so what's the definition of this? Let me just wipe out this one. So my rule number five is, if I have two numbers with opposite inner signs, what I have to do is the following. I have to compare these natural numbers. Well, which one is greater? Uh, in this case, it's 123. By the way, if they are equal, you remember there was a rule number two that the result will be zero. So they are not equal, and one is therefore uh, be, uh, uh, greater than another. I perform operation of subtraction on these two natural numbers. From greater one, I subtract the smaller one. I always can do this. So in 1.3 minus 37 is what? 86? 86, right. And then, I retain the sign of the bigger element. That's my rule. Since the bigger element is 123, which has an inner plus, I retain inter inner plus here. Similarly, if I have minus 123 and plus 37, I retain the sign of the bigger one. So operation of subtraction results in the same 86, but the sign will be minus in this case. That's it. Basically, I have defined all the operations on elements of my new set, which I call integer numbers. So integer numbers are these. Everything, whatever I have inside the curly brackets, with the brackets themselves. The strings, basically. Strings are my new numbers, my new elements of a new set. And, um, and they are operated upon using this type of uh, operations. OK, let's continue. I have not defined an operation of subtraction yet. This is easy. If from any number. That's rule number six. If from any number, let's say minus 123, doesn't matter, I define the operation of subtraction. Again, this is the operation. This is just an inner character, which looks the same, but doesn't really matter. And if I want to define operation of subtraction, by definition, this is an operation of addition of the opposite element. And we know what opposite element is, because we have defined it before. Opposite element is the same element, uh, is the same natural number inside. Inner number is the same, but inner sign is opposite. So that's by definition. So there is nothing basically to prove. And we know how to do this, because this is actually we know that we have two different inner signs, so it's difference between bigger and smaller, which is 86, and the sign is retained from the smaller one. So it's minus 86. So we have defined operation of subtraction. We can subtract any number. What else remains to be actually noted? Um, obviously, r uh, laws of commutation and association are um, very easily provable if I define everything, because basically I have defined based on, um, uh, based on the properties of natural numbers and operations of uh, addition between natural numbers. And uh, so obviously all these rules are transformed and uh, they follow from the corresponding rules for, for, for natural numbers. 
um, uh, commutative means you can uh, a plus b is equal to b plus a. And the association is when we have three numbers adding together, the order doesn't really make sense. And again, everything is very easily provable. So these operate, uh, operators are commutative, associative. So basically, my um, uh, set of integer numbers is very well defined right now. I have constructed, so it's a constructive approach, I have constructed these new elements of my new set of integer numbers using strings of characters, and I have defined operators of uh, addition and uh, subtraction for all of them. Now I can subtract any element from any element because I have just redefined it as an operator of addition of the opposite element, and the opposite always exists. So any two uh, numbers can be, um, and can, can be subtracted one from another. OK, now, here is a very important issue. Usually, people who teach um, uh, integer numbers, they're trying to say, OK, we have natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So let's add to this set new numbers, which is 0 and uh, minus 1, minus 2, etc., with these properties. As I was saying, this is not a um, mathematically rigorous type of definition. This is one of the examples of a better, of a more solid definition. Um, so what's important now is to understand that in this particular approach, it's not like integer is a big set and natural is a subset. That's not, that's not the case in this particular case. Because integers, as I define them, are strings with curly brackets and then plus or minus sign inside and some natural number. And natural number is just a number by itself. So in this particular approach, this is not true. This is something like this. It's two completely independent sets. So what's the relationship between them? I mean, we understand that there should be a relationship, and, and, and natural numbers are like positive integers, like. Um, so how can we do this type of thing? OK, here's what I'm saying. Within the set of integer numbers, there is a subset, which I can call pseudo-integers, uh, pseudo-natural. I mean, I just came up with this, pseudo-natural. And I'm saying that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between these two, uh, between these two uh, sets, sets of natural number and subset of the integers, which is called pseudo-natural numbers. So one-to-one -one correspondence. But that's not it. One-to-one -one correspondence is not sufficient. Here is my much more important quality. If you take this element and it's corresponding this, and you take this element and this is the corresponding element. What if you will add these two elements together, and for instance, the result will be this element, which has the corresponding element, pseudo nature element here. What's important is to show that the sum of these is also this. So the sum of two images is image of the sum. That, that's basically the the short version. Let me just repeat it again. Sum of two images of two original natural numbers is equal to uh, the image of their sum, of their original sum. So this is something which we really can prove. And here is how. Well, before I prove that, let me just um, say that it is extremely important to prove this property because then we can deal with pseudo-natural numbers, which are elements of integer set, in exactly the same fashion as we were dealing with natural numbers. So instead of doing arithmetic with natural numbers, we can do arithmetic with pseudo-natural numbers. But what's important is that if you cannot subtract 5 from 8 here, you can subtract. Let me just repeat this picture again. If this is 
integer numbers, and these are pseudonatural numbers, and you have two elements here, and you have among natural numbers two elements here. One is image maps here, and another is maps here. If you cannot subtract, let's say, this from this, because it results in non-existing natural number, you can subtract the images of these two guys, and you will get just another integer number, which obviously is not part of the pseudo-natural because it's outside of this. For instance, if this is 8, and this is 12, this is an image of the 8, this is the image of the 12, you cannot do that in the natural numbers, but you can do this, and that would result in some number outside of the outside uh, outside of the uh, pseudonatural subset. So that's the advantage. You can do everything you can do with these numbers. You can do everything you do with this plus something which you cannot do there. All right. So let's just talk about this correspondence. What corresponds to what, and how natural numbers are mapped into pseudonatural. Well, uh, uh, this is elementary, actually. If this is the natural number, let's call it m. These are integer number. But I'm basically saying this is the correspondence. So any natural number, what, 1, 2, 3, 123, corresponds to an integer number with a plus inner sign and the natural part of this exactly the same one to three. Now, how can we say that um, sum of two images is image of sum of sum? Well, let's just uh, illustrate it using some example first. So let's say you have two integer numbers. One corresponds to plus 5 in curly brackets and plus 8 in curly brackets. These are natural. These are integer. My pseudo-natural. Well, let's summarize. According to the rules of natural numbers, arithmetic, this is 13. Now, how did I define an operation of addition between two, uh, two strings? I said, if they have the same, number, the same sign, plus, the sign will be retained. Then I have to take two natural numbers inside and add them according to the rules of natural numbers, which is 13. But this is exactly what I would do if I map 13 directly. I would get curly bracket plus 13 curly bracket, right? So if I do summation first, and then I do the image mapping to from a natural number to a pseudo-natural integer, or if I do mapping first and then summation within the set of integer numbers, I will get exactly the same thing. Um, in some way, it resembles accounting. If you remember, we have to have some kind of balancing. If you have some kind of a, a matrix or a spreadsheet using computer terminology, you have numbers here which are totaling to this one. Then you have numbers here, which are totaling to this one. Then you can summarize vertically. This will be their total. This will be their total. This will be their total. And you can summarize um, vertically the column of the totals. So the total of all the local totals uh, should be equal to totaling these totals uh, of uh, these are uh, row totals, right? So this is a row total, and this is a row total. So your sum uh, of the row totals should be equal to sum of the column totals. And this is your balancing. 
So it's supposed to be exactly the same number, whether you summarize first this way and then this way, or if you summarize this way first and then this way. This is your basic balancing, basic accounting, if you wish, etc. This is very similar, because if because that actually what makes the whole uh, picture um, harmonious in some way, because we can deal now with these numbers in exactly the same fashion as we deal with these guys. Now, let's talk about subtraction, okay? That's easy. If I want to subtract from 5, I subtract 8. Well, this does not exist, obviously. So we can't really put anything into a correspondence, but here we can. If you remember, what I was saying was subtraction is actually addition of the opposite element, right? So if I subtract this, it's exactly the same as I take this, and then I add opposite element to 8. Now, how to add these two elements with different inner signs? Well, I know that I have to take from a bigger the smaller, and that would be the inner number, and the sign should be of the bigger one. So these guys exist in integer world, and there is nothing in the natural world which corresponds to them. So these are negative numbers. And I call these guys with plus positive, and I call these with minus negative. That's basically a definition of what is a positive and what is a negative integer number. And zero, you know, it has already been defined. Well, basically that concludes my um, presentation of uh, a little bit more solidly defined concept of integer numbers, defined as strings with certain properties. Um, jumping a little bit forward, um, I'll probably do exactly the same as, a, as, a, as an extra material for rational numbers, because we have, we have exactly the same situation. Like here we have with subtraction, we have the same situation among integer numbers now, um, with multiplication and its reverse division. You can multiply 5 by 8, but you cannot divide 5 by 8. Uh, so we need new numbers, rational numbers. So rational numbers can be introduced in exactly the same way using certain concept of strings, which I will do in that ne next lecture. And then, um, jumping even further, when I will introduce um, complex numbers, I'll just use this, this particular type of um, constructive introduction uh, of the concept of uh, complex numbers. And, uh, well, I think it's a little fun to go to um, something 